This is Busted Pencils, fully leaded education talk. Here are your hosts, Dr. Tim Slecker and Dr. Johnny Lupinacci, educated educators talking education. Yeah, that's what we do. Busted Pencils, fully leaded education talk, educated educators talking education Friday, you know what that means. First downs and Friday night lights. Johnny Lupinacci, how are you doing, my buddy? I'm doing well, man. And you know what? As it gets colder in all these regions, listeners out there, I know in Wisconsin, it's getting chilly. <laughs> now, out here in Washington, where I am, it's getting chilly. And the snow's even started coming down. So as we wind down football season, we're gearing up for winter sports really quick here. So it's an exciting time to be talking first downs and Friday night lights. Probably soon enough to transition to face off some free throws. Uh-oh. But you know how it goes. There's so many great things. And we're still rocking and rolling with with the with the tail end of football right now, too. So Tim, it's exciting times. It's incredibly exciting. And for that, we have, yes, Civic Media's own Chad Holmes. Chad, what's happening, our buddy? It is a great time of year. It's a transition time. You know, it's, uh, yeah. Going from uh, you know, the end of football, and then uh, actually this week I got underway uh, dodging the deer to uh, travel to some girls' basketball. Yes, yes, <laughs> I mean, sir. the first night I go off on this county road to uh, Loyal, and it's about a, well, an hour drive from where we are in Wausau for a, for a game. And I get on this county road for about 14 miles. On the way there, huge deer. I just dodge on the way home at about like nine thirty. Huge deer. So now I am just paranoid for the rest of the winter. I'm glad Uh-oh. hunting is starting because they can take care of a few of the deer out there, and maybe I can get uh, back and forth safely. Send them out, or Chad. You know what? I mean, take take one out and then throw it in the back and take it home <laughs> for dinner, man. You know. Hey, I I just I got I got myself another vehicle just uh, last <laughs> summer, and I I don't want to have any dents this quickly. Oh, man. Well, it is. It's Busted Pencils. Our number is 608-557-8577. That is the Busted Pencils mailbag. Drop us a question, especially for Chad. You got questions about football and where we're heading with more sports here into the winter. Again, the number is 608-557-8577. Okay, Chad, we are finishing up football in Wisconsin. I'm just going to lay it out there. Tell us what's happening, what's going on, who's in the championships, where should we be looking, where are the best games coming as we close down the season? Well, the good news is all the best games are at one site at Camp Randall Stadium with the the championship round for the uh, 7-11 player divisions. And uh, and as as I was looking at all the matchups for this uh, weekend, I don't think there's anybody that – I'd consider a major Cinderella. I think uh, some of the best uh, football programs in the state of Wisconsin have made it down to Madison again. In fact, in our area here in central Wisconsin, in Wausau, a couple of the small school powerhouses that have been around for years and years and years are back uh, in Madison. Edgar, uh, I think they're going for their ninth state championship. And you got Stratford who's looking for their third straight. And they had had a run about six in a row uh, a decade or so ago. So those two programs, outstanding. But if you look down, up and down, uh, some of the programs that have just been known to be very, very good. I think the, the cream has certainly risen to the top uh, when it comes to 2024 state football. Hmm. Johnny Lupinacci, what do you think, man? I mean, I just think it's an exciting time, and it's always yeah. fun, folks, if you can get out to an event like that. It is just one of the, like, you know, purest uh, forms of, uh, of of not only joy, but of, you know, of the ups and downs, the triumphs and tribu- tribulations <laughs> of of youth athletics and school programs. And so you see a lot of great stuff. It's always a hallmark of coming into the Thanksgiving season. Also, if you're not in Wisconsin, right, this happens in every state. Absolutely. This is the time of year. So so look around and see if you want to see a great day, you know, of, of some really amazing football and just our, the culmination of hard work and effort from all of those programs around our states. It's always a great, great way to spend that day um, and see so many students enjoying it because you really right. do. You see all the families and the students coming together. Um, and, and, and we always talk about it on here. Yeah, we get excited about sports. Sports is our thing. We love it. We can't imagine schools without it. So it's a stalwart of not only democracy, 
but of our public education system. But the same thing can be said really for so many other programs, right? So mm-hmm. we always talk about it too. Remember, folks, if you're listening and you want to join the conversation, you can give us a call or text at 608-557-8577 and let us know about some of the other big events that happen through high school extracurriculars in your community. Because I'm remembering too, like this is also the time of year where we have Christmas concerts coming up or holiday. Sorry, let me correct myself. Holiday concerts, right? Because it's not just Christmas. We'll get into that later in Busted Pencils and other episodes as we, you know, respond to the, you know, Christian nationalism in our public schools, or at least the effort to put that there. But these are great ways that folks from diverse backgrounds get together and celebrate not only sports, but, you know, music, art, all of the ways our young people connect into those essential curriculas that we talk about here on Busted Pencils. So, Chad, it's good to see you. Tim, it's always great to be talking about what's happening. And this is a special time of year. So we're going to have some state champs. Pretty we're soon. State, state champs in chat. I can point that out. Camp Randall, where to see that. And as you point out, Johnny, this is happening all over the country, all 50 states. And I know, too, my own home state of Pennsylvania, uh, the idea to get to play in such a cool place like that. And in Pittsburgh, they will be playing at, well, it used to be the Heinz Stadium. Now it's some kind of like Accenture, but where the Pittsburgh Steelers play. So if you're in that area of, you know, the western side of Pennsylvania, you'll be having your championships at, you know, where the Pittsburgh Steelers play. And think about that, too. I remember, too, all the way back, 1983, it was a sophomore. We were in a championship for our high school football, got to play at the University of Pittsburgh's field on turf. It is just an awesome thing to be able to do those things. So look around wherever you are. There are going to be some really cool places. And some of these students and kids who are playing get to play on some incredible fields like Camp Randall like that. And what a great way to support and show everybody how much you really do. And again, you know what? It's not just football too, especially this. Hey, guess what? How many of those marching bands are going to be also participating in this? So again, essential curriculars we're always talking about. So looking forward to that. But Chad, we're making a change now. Um, You know, it's the weather is changing. And with that, with the end of football season, we're about to start the winter sports. Give us a little bit of preview. What's coming up? What should we be watching for? Uh, you know, and share a little bit of a behind the scenes secrets with us. It's one of the interesting things about this time of year. Um, uh, this week is the first week, uh, the first nights of uh, girls basketball. Really, it's all girls basketball in terms of winter sports this week. And the next week will be the first uh, chance for boys basketball and also girls and boys hockey to be uh, out there uh, as well. And it's always interesting, too, because I would mentioned uh, uh, one of the area teams that's playing in the state football finals this week. Uh, Edgar, because, you know, when, when a team makes it to Camp Randall and makes it to the state finals, uh, they want everybody to go. They want all the students to, to get on the bus and, and head down there and support their classmates and their friends. And uh, there was a game that was supposed to be played uh, at the end of this week uh, featuring one of those schools. So they had to postpone it because <laughs> their football team, a girls basketball game was supposed to be played uh, on Thursday night. And uh, for Edgar at Marathon, which is a team that we cover here on WXCO, but uh, since everybody's going to the football game, they said, well, we got to postpone it. So they're going to play it in a couple of weeks time. So uh, there's not a lot of time between seasons. When I was younger, it felt like there was a lot more time between seasons, where between fall and winter and then winter and spring. Nowadays, it feels like they just go you know, back to back because they're playing more games. When I was going to school, you mentioned 1983. I, I went to school at D.C. Everest here in central Wisconsin, and our football team made it to the state finals that year, went down there. Remember that? It was it was cold. I remember that much. But uh, but nowadays, it's like these guys, they have, some of these guys who are playing this weekend, they have to go right back uh, to practice for uh, for basketball or wrestling or hockey or whatever you may be playing uh, in the winter. So that's one of the aspects that I try to talk to student athletes about because we have a, a weekly high school sports show and every week we bring on a student athlete guest and how they handle their time is such a, a very important factor because you have your sports, you have your studies, you have your life. I mean, you want to you know do some fun things have uh, you know hang out with your friends and such but you have to really I think this time of year can be a, a challenge for those who are very successful in the fall and then going right into the in, into the winter 
Yeah, I mean, all that, uh, Chad, I, the enthusiasm you bring to talking about this, man, it's exciting. It gets me going like that. And, yeah, you know, if you want to have a comment, you know, if you got a question, you like first downs in Friday nights, Friday night lights, we'd love to hear from you, 608-557-8577. Yeah, Chad, and you make me remember that, too. Yeah, playing, you know, football and being a wrestler, that idea of literally – Going from, you know, that state championship in 1983, I was already four weeks behind all mm-hmm. of the, you know, the 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 wrestling exclusives who only did wrestling and had to come right in there right off the field. And boy, what a season. I tell you, that's the other thing, too, with the winter sports is the length and the commitment that those athletes are putting in there. Because in the, imagine two two sport athletes like that, like you say, football into basketball or wrestling and something like that. They will have been practicing from summer until February, sometimes into March and thinking about that. And so the commitments that these students put in and the coaches, again, too, think about all the coaches and all of the, the efforts there. I just want to kind of highlight that again, listener, to remind everybody, you know, what's going on when you're talking about this. And boy, Johnny, you know, think about that, man. Two sports. I remember that. It was like, you know what? I, you know, I didn't go home after school until like March or April. You know, it was just like it was just, you know, it was waking up, going to school and then not coming home till seven o'clock at night every night, all the way from, you know, summer through August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March. And then finally, maybe in April, I got to walk home with my buddies. Well, Tim, you probably didn't play lacrosse or run track then because it was like, you know, it was there was always a, a fall sport, a winter sport and a spring sport. That's a rotation. Um, and there was always clubs and other activities and great ways for our young people to connect. And don't forget for so many teachers to coach, to be part of these process, to be part of that process that rounds out public education in this country. I mean, we're proud of it. It's part of being a patriot is, you know, being proud of the things that are the fabric of our democracy. And, and, and I know some cringe when we say this, but sports are part of that. Mm. So are, so are the, the clubs that are like our debate teams, our quiz bowls, right? Our yearbook team, like all of the ways that we come together, extracurriculars as part of schools, we call them essentials. They're really part, they're the fabric of our democracies because everyone out there in the workforce knows it's just not about going to work and only doing your job. That's mm. not, that's not how we are as a community. We have passions, we have things we enjoy, and those things are noteworthy. So we celebrate them here on Busted Pencils. I'm excited, man. It's a great time of year. I'm Can excited. I jump yeah, though? jump in, Chad. One thing I wanted to add because I was really glad that you guys talked about, you know, when you bring me on, you, you know, want to talk about sports. I was really glad that you talked about the other extracurriculars because yeah. uh, I do a daily show as well. And one thing that I do, and especially this time of year, because uh, again, this time of year, usually in November, uh, the uh, schools have their theatrical productions. And I bring yes. in a couple of the cast members and they come in and they're just, they, they have as much passion uh, as the athletes that I get a chance to talk to. And, and it's just wonderful to hear from them and their experiences because they put in the uh, an incredible amount of time as well. I mean, when you get into a show, it's like you have the auditions, you have six weeks basically of, uh, of rehearsals, and then you, you do the shows and uh, the incredible talents and, and the fact that, I, you know, I'd love to have them on and I'd love to tell folks, hey. If you want to go out on a Friday night and see a football game, that's fantastic. But then Saturday evening, go over to the auditorium here in uh, Wausau West or wherever it may be uh, here in central Wisconsin and, and see those kids as well. Because, I mean, the, the kids these days, and I, and again, I often hear people, oh, the kids, you know, not, not the way it used to be. These kids are fantastic. They I are. Really, I just think the talent and uh, uh, the amount that they give to everything that they do should be always rewarded and uh, really again i just uh, i love hearing about that in addition to the sports as well absolutely and you see so much young talent that you know this is this it's just a gift in our community to be able to go to those theatrical productions those choir concerts those band performances they're they're riveting they're amazing and they're truly a gift um excite so excited uh chad is we kind of you know we kind of wind wind down this episode but you know i you know now I just got to talk. You know, I'm a hockey fanatic. <laughs> so I am too. I tell you. Coming in, as yeah. so, and I'm and I'm not a Wisconsinite, right? But I follow some Wisconsin hockey. So, you know, I think it was Chippewa Falls 
It's a big program. I was I, I've heard of guys coming out of Superior, a uh, Madison yeah, Memorial, yeah, yeah. Uh, Hudson. Right, I know Hudson. Oh, was a Hudson. Good one, so. They so, they 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 ruined my winter last year because my team oh. lost the West, went over there and lost in the playoffs. So there you you're, go. You're so, going right through the the heart there. So we'll be reaching back out uh, for folks for our listeners. You know, uh, Johnny here, big hockey fan, big hockey. I'm gonna give a shout out to the girl side because I've yeah. been very lucky. Uh, last season, uh, the team that I covered, it's a co-op between Wassa West, Wassa East, DC Everest, and Mosinee. It's called the Central Wisconsin Storm, and they won the state championship last uh, winter. And their first game is coming up on Tuesday of next week, and I'm looking forward to seeing them again. And and, and I just I think the the young ladies on that Storm program are just fantastic, and they, they've had such an incredible run over the years. I think now I, I should I should know this. I've been to all of them. I think that was their uh, fifth or sixth state championship since the program got underway a couple of decades ago. Uh, so again, it's not just the boys' hockey; it's the girls' hockey as well. Absolutely, and and all the UW programs all have great hockey teams. I know I've caught some of the UW yeah. Superior women's games uh, up there in that full snow. It's so great. So I'm going to be watching now, Chad. That's what I was going to ask you for: who to keep an eye on, and I'm going to be keeping an eye on the Storm because that's right up my alley too. I love yeah. watching uh, women's hockey. It's great hockey. Uh, the sport is growing so fast around our country. And, I, and, and it's because of all of the ways that the young people are really carrying that sport into the future. And, uh, and you know, it's known as Canada's sport, but I know in Wisconsin and in Michigan and in Minnesota uh, and all across the coast and all these big hockey states, we got something to say because Team USA, both men's and women's, just keeps getting better and better. So exciting times, exciting times in sports. I'm stoked, Chad, to follow the storm. Thanks for that pro tip because my my eyes got really big. If you're watching on the YouTube, my eyes got big because that is exactly what I want to be able to follow. Um, we'll be following up on that here on Busted Pencils. Yeah, tune in on our uh, on our app on Tuesday night. You can listen to me do the broadcast. And now, all your listeners out there, get the Civic Media app, download it, and then go to WXCO and you can listen on Tuesday night. That sounds like a great plan. I'll be listening. Hey, I got to promote uh, whenever I can here. Got to get those listenership uh, numbers That's way exactly up there. You guys want. know it. Uh, obviously, it's like uh, we we, we want to have as many of those hits as possible. Well, let's do it, Chad. Let's let listeners tune in Tuesday night. Johnny, I'm going to be listening, and Chad, we'll check back in and talk about it. We'll do a recap. But Tim, Chad, give us the give us the full info. Give the promo for all our listeners who are going to tune in and listen to the storm on Tuesday. Yeah, I mean, that's their season opener, and uh, I, we do a, a few of the Storm games. We do a lot of the Wausau West hockey games. So if you're a real hockey fan, we will be uh, covered uh, between uh, late November and then hopefully into into uh, early March. But, yeah, Tuesday night, uh, the Storm take on the uh, – I'll be heading down to Stevens Point to uh, take on the Wisconsin Valley Union. Again, it's a co-op. And that's one thing about the girls' hockey that I think uh, – uh, that I would I would be it would be great to see the growth continue where you can see some of these schools be able to go solo, but uh, at this point it's still not at the level where a lot of these schools can have their own teams. So we have these co-op teams, and that's basically uh, for almost every team in Wisconsin when it comes to girls hockey or co-ops. There's only a few. I think Superior is one, and uh, Hudson is another that are solo teams. But uh, yeah, I'll be doing it uh, on Tuesday night. Uh, we'll. Opening face off at seven o'clock, and uh, really looking forward to it. Last time I saw the storm, they were lifting that state championship trophy in Madison last uh, March. So, curious to see how they look uh, starting off the new season. Oh, I love it! I love it, Chad. I'll be tuning in, and listeners, you heard it. Get the Civic Media app if you don't already have it, because that's the way you can listen to the Storm game on Tuesday night. Chad, thanks for joining us here on Busted Pencils, listeners. You know you can always call or text us at six zero eight five five seven. 8577. This is Busted Pencils, fully leaded education talk. Thanks for joining us. And now for our moment of Zen. Patriotism doesn't mean support of government. Patriotism means support of the principles it's supposed to stand for. This is Busted Pencils, fully leaded education talk. Don't forget, you can catch us on Saturday with Kevin K. And don't be late for homeroom on Monday. And of course, every Wednesday, class in session.
Now keep busting pencils.